Welcome back everyone. So today the day is finally here where I get to play with some stains. To be quite honest with you I'm feeling a bit under the weather but I'm just so excited to do this that I thought I couldn't resist running down and maybe putting the first coat of stain on this guitar top. This is the first time that I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be using Angelus spirit based stains and to be honest with you, even at this very late stage in the game, I don't have an exact idea of colour in mind. My original intent was to go with a grey or a black finish because there's already a lot of colour going on on my fretboard here and I didn't really want to clash with that. Black or thereabouts is definitely the theme I'm going with, but I couldn't resist getting my favourite colours, blue and purple in the dies as well and I'm hoping that I can work them in there at some point as well. The obvious way to make use of these dies would be to use the black to put an initial coat on and then rub that back uh, until it's to the point where it's accentuating the figure and giving a lovely 3D effect and then put the colour on top. I thought about because I want to go for more of a black finish with possibly just a hint of colour, I thought about actually doing that but just not rubbing the black back very far and I think that could still work to some extent but just because I don't really care what it ends up looking like as long as it involves these favourite colours of mine I thought it'd be a little bit different and actually try applying the colour first rubbing that back and then applying the black over the top now that could have the effect that it just completely washes out the colour if it does we might leave it like that we might rub it back and have another go but I guess we're just going to experiment and see what happens. Obviously it would be a really good idea if I was going for something specific to experiment on some offcuts of this maple first. I did save some offcuts of this maple especially for that but unfortunately I think they must have ended up in the fire or something because they've been lost for absolutely months so I've got nothing to test on but as I say all the colours involved here I do like even if it just ended up plain black I would be happy so I'm just going to play see what happens. So for this first run I'm going to be applying purple neat which should look pretty neat it'll probably look a bit over the top to be fair but uh Wish me luck. I'm not too bothered about it seeming a bit blotch or anything like that because at the end of the day we're going to be rubbing it all back anyway. best. There's a very vivid purple we've got there. I have made life a little bit difficult for myself with this full binding in that it's already rounded over but I'm just gonna have to do the best I can and then try and fix with sanding later if I can. Initial impressions are that the die doesn't run too badly, so I'm not really worried about it dripping off or running down anywhere, but it is naturally going to soak along the grain of the wood and potentially cause me problems in those binding areas, but it is what it is. That is a lovely purple colour. I'm going to have to resist the temptation to just leave it purple because it is my favourite colour. When you're doing this it does highlight any areas where you've maybe not sanded all that well. done a lot better than I expected so far to be honest. I probably forgot to mention I've put some tissue paper down in the, the holes to catch any spillages throughout the finishing process. I 
I did do a fairly bad job of the jointing process when I put this together as my first cap. I'm interested to see how prominent the centre lane is going to be. I am actually going to need to use that centre lane at some point because I still haven't drilled my bridge post. Having not drilled the bridge post, that does mean I'm effectively going to be drilling holes into a finished guitar, which is pretty scary. But there's not a lot I can do about that. That's the trade-off in finishing at this stage in the game. definitely a case of where there's been little bits of epoxy or something near the edges where I can just about make out blotches where it's obviously affected the finish somewhat but it is what it is might be a little bit better after this coat's rubbed back Should we see what happens if we put a little bit of alcohol on? Why not? I feel like that is going somewhere to soaking in there and it is, the figure looks like it's almost developing over time as, as we let it dry. Beautiful. Well, let's leave that to dry. I don't imagine it will take too long. So I happened to notice after recording that my camera wasn't really picking up purple very well as a color. And I think that was partly down to white balance settings and things like that. So I just want to quickly show you this again because it's probably appeared pretty blue so far if I don't manage to fix it in post. So there you go, that's much closer to the actual true colour that it is at the moment. And I knew I was going to have this problem. I absolutely love this colour and would quite happily just have this guitar body in this colour. The only problem is, it, I just feel it's going to clash with the, the multicolour inlay. I don't know, it's kind of growing on me, but uh, no, I think this is the guitar to experiment on and as such, I want to definitely try applying two different dyes just to see what kind of effects we can create. I can always come back and do another purple guitar in the future. I'm sure there will be many more. So we're gonna let that dry overnight. It, it's actually touch dry now as it is already, but there's no harm in making sure that it is fully dry and then we'll come back probably tomorrow and sand it back. Alrighty, so hopefully the camera's behaving a little bit better today. Hopefully this does look purple on screen. If not, I'll show you some pictures of how it currently looks. But um, yeah, I mean, that's a lovely shade of purple and I'd really like to keep it, but in the interest of experimentation, we are going to sand it back. There's basically two options for doing this that I have available. We have fine wire wool. It's actually quadruple zero grade wire wool that I have to hand, which might be a little bit too fine. 
or sandpaper. I hear that the wire wool is a little bit better because it tends not to clog up so much. I think I can already tell that this wool, I think when you're going for rubbing back a final finish, certainly for the effect I'm probably going to try and get, this would be perfect, but I think it's a little bit too fine. So with stuff I'm using is this brand of quadruple zero steel wool. And I'm sure if I keep going, it's going to create a really nice effect. But I think due to how fine it is, it is going to resist rubbing back as far as I want it to. But I'll continue to rub off the excess with this anyway. Okay, so that's definitely going to be the method to use for rubbing back a final coat. But I just want to be a little bit more severe on this coat. Let's bring out the 240 grit. Well, it's moment of truth time. Now, there's a classic mistake in luthery, especially when doing this staining and finishing, that if you don't get your sanding right and you leave those little scratches in there, you'll live to regret it. Now, having done my stain job and identified some flaws in the wood and definitely probably some scratches and things as well, I'm going to carry on and make that mistake because I really don't care. <laughs> Obviously, if I was doing this guitar, this guitar for someone else, I would take more care. But as I say, it's just a bit of fun for me, this one. So I'm not too bothered. And I really want to crack on. So 
it's black dye time. I've got some of the Angelus jet black dye and that is diluted down to about somewhere around 50 50 uh, maybe two parts alcohol to one part water wish me luck I thought in terms of actually making sure I don't go over the edges. Famous last words. I guess it's more just the running and seeping down the grain that's more of an issue. seems that when it's diluted down like this you get a much more inconsistent colour if we're not careful about how much we're putting on which I guess sort of makes sense so you'll see me going over old areas because Seems like that second coat gets me more to where I want to be. It's looking pretty good. I just want to check my edges. There's a couple of areas where I've there's a couple of areas where I've dabbed purple into dodgy little chips on the corners of these pockets and things where I think the purple is just gonna remain. Don't want to get in there too aggressively with the black. Ah, I've got one smudgy over the edge there. Hopefully that will sound back okay. Now just going to put a bit of plain alcohol on, just as a blending agent. Might wipe off some of what's already on there, but 
hopefully what is on should stay blended pretty well. Just that faint kind of midnight purpley hint in black. Very nice. So that's had about 24 hours to dry and it's looking pretty good. Uh, I am noticing there's an ever slight greeny haze in there. That often happens when you get sort of the yellow tannins of the wood and you've got kind of the blue nature of the purple dye. Uh, but it looks okay. Um, I could rub this back with wire wool and it would probably enhance the flaming a little bit more. Um, but I'm actually enjoying the kind of subdued matte nature of the colour. Um, obviously when I put a gloss coat over that, that is going to pop out a little bit. But uh, no, I think I actually like it as it is. But what I do definitely have to do before I go on to the next stage is just go around and tidy up the binding areas as best as I possibly can with some sandpaper. So I'm going to do that now. So that's the binding tidied up and cleaned off. Now I need to apply some sanding sealer to the coat. The purpose of the sanding sealer is really uh, just to try and seal in that colour as much as possible because I probably will be brushing on an epoxy finish onto this which does have the potential to lift colour and cause smears and all that kind of thing. I wouldn't have thought it would be too visible on this to be quite honest with you anyway. Uh, but it's definitely something we want to do. So in this instance, I've gone with chestnut aerosol Acrylic sanding sealer. I would have normally gravitated towards the cellulose Or perhaps the shellac finish, but as on this rare occasion, we're probably going to be using epoxy I thought that the acrylic would probably play better with the epoxy Not that I've really got anything solid to base that on But uh, that was my thought process anyway I don't want to overdo that so I'll just let that dry and then we might come back and give it a second coat after about five or ten minutes and then that should be enough. All right, that's had a good going over. We'll get that uh, masking tape off straight away before it sticks and then we'll leave it another 24 hours before sanding that back. I didn't realise until applying the sealer yesterday that I hadn't actually cleaned up on the inside of the F holes. So that is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go around and clean those up. Uh, there is actually a little bit of blue contamination on a part of the binding as well. So I'm going to sand that off as well. And then we'll actually sand back 
the sealer as well and then uh, hopefully it should be more or less ready for finish assuming I don't have to apply any further sealer. So that's been sanded back. There was more black came off than I would have liked. How that's probably looking to you on the camera now actually isn't too bad, but certainly in the room, there's quite a lot of light spots that are just a little bit too light to me. So I'm gonna try another coat of just a little bit diluted down black, um, just over the top of those areas. Hopefully they should seep in where the sealer has been sanded through. I think the reason that the acrylic sanding sealer came off as much as it did was because the coat of black that I laid on top was never rubbed back before attempting to seal it so it probably was a bit oversaturated and probably wasn't particularly impregnated into the wood. So I've sanded it back, I've put another coat of black over the top, that's going to probably have similar problems in that it's not going to be particularly well impregnated, particularly now that the sanding sealer has been sprayed on top, although in theory you can stain over the top of sanding sealer in theory. But um, no, it's back to where I want it with that extra little coat of black. So I am gonna try one more coat of sanding sealer and I'm going to concentrate it particularly on the binding areas. And then we'll do the best we can with that. And then all being well, we'll just have to go ahead with the final clear coat and see how we get on. Well, I think I've done the best I can with that. It's getting a bit frustrating, kind of having to sand back, get it all perfect, then mess up a bit, then restain it, then sand it back, and all the rest of it. So I think I've got to the point where it's looking good in terms of the stain job as it stands. I have done my best to seal it. Doesn't mean it is properly sealed, but we're just gonna have to see. So I'm going to mix up some more z -poxy finishing resin in equal parts using my scales and we're going to try putting some on and hope that colour doesn't run too bad.
So the epoxy top coat has dried. Um, it has done a lot to sort of hide the nice flamey thing that we had going on. But that is hopefully just because at the minute the surface is all pretty rough and it just all needs wet sanded back nice and smooth. And I'm sure it will come up lovely. There is just one little bit that I'm not quite happy with and that's the faux binding, which in this area, I don't think I caught it fully on camera, but it did cause me quite a lot of bother sort of sanding through then having to try and put stuff back on top. And as such, we've ended up with a little bit of sort of cross contamination around there. Um, I could leave it. It would in theory be ready to, to wet sand really and just get this finished, but I think because this is going to be my first time doing the whole sort of wet sanding process, there's a fairly high chance that I might sand through the coat and as such, I'm probably going to put another coat on all round and then sand most of it back probably. So if I'm going to be doing that anyway, I think I might actually try and sand this back just to, just to try and get rid of that little bit of black contam contamination because it does spoil it a little bit. It's not the end of the world if I can't fix it, but I might as well try. So let's do that now. There we go, that's looking a little bit better now. Of course, this thing's not gonna be perfect. I keep saying it, but it is my first attempt, but I think that was worth doing for an improvement. So I'm now gonna give it a quick rub over with alcohol, and then we're going to go about putting that final coat of epoxy on.